feel like I'm losing my mind Is everybody in the world blind? Please, Lord, give me a sign, a sign I thank you with everything in me For getting the word out and um, participating and trying to help people Because I'm telling you, uh, nobody has seen shit like this in 100 years Welcome back to FAQ The Madness. We respectfully exercise our First Amendment right to publish interactions with government officials through the unbiased view of a camera. Let's jump into another ref. Recording. What is up, everybody? My name is Craig. I am Fact The Madness. Haven't been live for a while, so I thought I would kind of uh, give it a whirl. Got a lot of things on the horizon literally including the uh the hurricane milton it's ruined the family vacation that it has so i actually have a new setup you guys can't see exactly how it is i don't know what it is but i keep having this itch on my back and i can't really reach it My family, my wife and I, we've been on vacation um, multiple times. So my my grandson's birthday is in like September. Um, we went back home. Uh, just not really here as much as I normally am. And it seems like for multiple weeks in a row, we had something to do. Whether someone was visiting, we were visiting somebody else. I named this live what i named it uh, you know we've already dealt with i don't know if they're pronouncing it uh helene or helen helen i think it's, it's helene which now is affecting uh, uh western north carolina i live in eastern north carolina so in fact people were calling us asking how we were doing i really wasn't quite aware of the fact that there was the suffering and the and the damage and all that stuff that was happening in Asheville, north carolina um and i i became even more aware just a couple of days when um cliff williams uh reached out to me and he said are you aware of what's going on in Asheville?" and i actually i wasn't i told him i wasn't but you know um there's a whole bunch of stuff going on as it relates to people that are able to help their boots that are on the ground there um, people wanting to come in the logistics of uh people trying to get there and fema or whatever government entities trying to um keep them out and and i i've heard all kinds of i mean uh you know people that are there going through the suffering that they're going through seeing the the you know the unalived people that are there um and i'm sure that the, the toll is is growing steadily i thank you with everything in me for getting the word out and um, participating and trying to help people because I'm telling you, uh, nobody has seen shit like this in a hundred years. Not being able to uh, find out where their loved ones are uh, and then people wanting to help, but then some entity, big government in place, trying to keep account of all the supplies, all the moving parts, um and just trying to accomplish what they need to accomplish and i think what most people are probably understanding is that when these things come into place despite the fact that the funds are there fema for example to set up aid and uh and supplies and all those kind of things but there's always the problems that exist so i think the way it stands right now is people are just saying you know we don't need you involved I don't, I don't really know. I, I'll be the first to tell you. I do not know what the solution is in this regard. Um, I've never been to Asheville. I haven't even really checked out the, uh, the geography there. But it seems to be one of those places or one of those instances where it's not very easy to get in and out of there. And I know ap apparently close to where Tennessee is, like Nashville, those, that the area, the border of there. Um, it's kind of problematic as well. So it would be very difficult 
for my family and I to go on the vacation which we had planned. So, you know, I, I, I lived in Utah for thir some 30 years. Uh, I moved to North Carolina, partially because of the age of my parents uh, who are in Indiana. Both my parents are in Indiana, um, age being a factor. Um, you know, I wanted to be closer to them in case there was anything, any reason that I would need to take care of them or, or you know, just to, to be closer to, to family. Um, you know, my father's getting old, my mother uh, suffering from dementia, as she has. Being closer on the East uh, Coast was instrumental in my decision, that, that being my, my fiance at the time, deciding whether or not to move to North Carolina from Utah. She's from, from Utah. I was there for many years. Um, and then when my job offered me the, uh, the position, being the director of a call center, um, all of those factors came into play. So we did move to North Carolina and now we are closer to family. So when we went, when we got married and went to Indiana, had my father marry us, they mentioned that they had been planning a family trip to Disney, Disney World, the one that's in Orlando in Florida. So we're like, cool, you know, we have a condo and see if we can get some you know, some arrangements that might make the trip uh, more more uh, cost effective, you know, cheaper, those kind of things. So we started working things out and doing some planning. This was like months ago. I was like, we're like probably four or five months of planning. And they had been planning for two years or so prior to that. So we get it all planned. Uh, we get my, my daughters, all three of my daughters in Utah, basically to plan coordinate everything for them to come as well so it's a lot of moving familial parts family parts involved in getting us to one place to enjoy you know to fellowship together have the funds in place to be able to have this vacation and then we start hearing about mr milton now, I haven't even looked into, I think I, I think I may have looked into this before. If any of you guys know what it is, like how the names come about, because we had Katrina, so a female one. I remember Irene. I remember Ivan, I think maybe, maybe. A, I don't, I never know whether it's going to be a female or, or a male. I think it has something to do with where it's coming from. But all of these things, I think, are, are set up. But I don't even know. Why is Mr. Milton, why is his name? And I swear if I see a Milton in real life, I'm probably going to want to knock him upside the head. But Milton has, is, is apparently, you know, set poised to, to wreak havoc, havoc to multiple people. And like I said in the description, I don't mean to sound um, selfish by any means. I mean, I've already succumbed to the fact that we are not going to be able to go on this trip. My wife and I traveling down by car to meet everybody who's flying in from multiple different places. I'm hearing that this is the first time that Disney World has has uh, closed down its, uh, its doors in many years. Did you know in 50 years of history, Disney World has closed only a handful of times. We're sharing every Every single time the parks have closed. All right. So. Hurricane closures. Natural disasters have caused Disney World to close most often over time. Makes sense. Out of its closures, the majority have been due to hurricanes. Florida is prone to hurricanes, but Orlando is located inland. So hurricanes often fizzle out before they make it to Disney World. If they do make it. The winds and rains have typically died down in comparison to hurricane on coastal or inland uh, island city. All right, so let's see. Okay, here we go. It looks like here are the hurricanes that have forced Disneyland or Disney World to close. So 1999, it looks like, was the earliest. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. See, Floyd, Charlie, Francis, Janine, or Jean, Matthew, Irma, Dorian, Ian, and Nicole. 
So does it look like, let's see, there's how many females? We'll call that one, two, three, four. Four against one, two, three, four, five. Okay, so the so the guys have it. <laughs> All right, so the guys have it. Yeah, we had until Wednesday to decide. We probably were going to be traveling on Thursday or Friday. We could have we could have gone either of two days, Thursday or Friday, uh, to meet up with our family, and then spend four or five days there. So, but it just looks like that it's just not going to work. So, we had to make some decisions. Even when, when we first started hearing that there was like a a hurricane that might affect our plans to go on vacation. At first, I was like, well, this is the day we're supposed to be there. And on that day, it says it's past. I'm like, it should be OK. I mean, that was my first thought. It literally was my first thought was, oh, we're still going to be able to go. But then it, in like a very short period of time, went from a lower category to a higher category, I think five. In a very short period of time, it's like, hmm, it might be a little bit worse. But then I was hearing also that, you know, over this in the Gulf of Mexico, you know, it has all this moisture and, and temperature and all that stuff. And it, it 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 can build up while it's over the sea. And then when it gets over land, it kind of dies down. So I'm still like kind of thinking in my mind, you know, there's still hope. As optimistic as I can be about it, um, the reality is likely that, you know, it even my even my oldest daughter, who was traveling from Utah to meet us, um, it had been the first time that I would see my grandson at, at Disneyland or Disney World, etc. Um, they were like, you know, we don't want to be traveling into, you know, danger. And I kind of agree. I mean, I get it. They, they her husband and she are making decisions absent what the family is doing. They're going to be meeting today. And I think at the end of the day, it's just best that we just, yeah, make it another day. So, but I feel for, I was just listening to DL Saint. DL Saint, I really want to know podcast. This guy right here. And in fact, it was this show where he was talking about um, the hurricane. So actually, I'm going to, let's listen to this real quick. As you guys know, I live in Tampa. And uh, unless you've been under a rock, you guys also know it is a category five hurricane uh, projected to hit Tampa dead on Wednesday. It's Monday. So I am gathered up my family and we are getting out of here. We are going to head north. Um, I'm just kind of driving around. I'm looking at what's going on. A lot of people uh, don't seem to be taking this serious. They're just going about their life, doing their thing. Um, I've seen the aftermath of a Category 5 hurricane, uh, Hurricane Andrew. I was in the Army. They sent us down for relief efforts. And um, I'm here to tell you that hurricanes are not to be played with. Amen. Um, we just had a storm hit, just kind of skirt us two weeks ago. And a lot of flooding. The surge did a lot of damage. Um, I just drove past a street here that has like a block and a half of people with taking their flooded out and damaged uh, household goods and put them on the corner. We're talking sofas and beds and mattresses and stuff like that. Everything that got waterlogged is sitting on the, sitting on the street right now. And there's another storm coming in a couple of days. Tampa's not designed to handle a major storm coming from the Gulf. That is no joke. I'm going to tell you something. We go from North Carolina. I live in Eastern North Carolina to Naples, which is not very, not, I, th I want to say it's like an hour and a half, maybe two hours away from Tampa. And every single time that we have traveled down there, we go through Tampa. It'll say like we have, I'm going to say four hours left. Or maybe I want to say it's like two hours, maybe a little bit more. But every time we get there, 
there's always a huge amount of traffic. And by the time that we are traveling through it, like it goes three hours, you know, it, the time gets <laughs> more and more and more. So imagine what's happening when we're traveling through and the traffic's like that. And then something like this happens. So he's in that area. So the last time that we went home, I'm pretty sure we diverted around somehow, probably going west a little bit and then traveled up to North Carolina. But we we made it so that we didn't go through Tampa. Um, yeah. So, I mean, if he and this cat right here, I mean, he seems like he's one of those guys, you know, he's talked about being in the army. I think he was a, a air traffic controller, you know, so he's he's all about logistics and he's packing up his family and leaving. I just got this pair of glasses is a new pair of glasses that I got online. If you if you haven't shopped for a pair of glasses recently, I mean, there are some kind of interesting technology going on. First of all, where I got the glasses done, uh, there was like a technician there and he set me up and he did a couple of different tests. And then online, like through a Zoom kind of thing, I spoke with the doctor and the doctor could control all the things and flip, say, do you like one better or two better, three or four, you know, that kind of thing. The reason why I mention it is because although she says that I got is gets me to 2020 i'm i'm still not quite used to this progressiveness on these particular glasses and so sometimes i'm looking and it's still blurry and i'm not quite used to them so if i see like if i look like i'm doing this it's because my ass can't see <laughs> that's why okay that's so funny you know what i think i might have been so i'm i am now i'm, I'm turning 54 in in, in a month so I feel like right around when I was 40 something, maybe 45 years old, I kept having a problem with my, with my phone. And I, I remember think I, I, I had lost my glasses or broken them or something like that. And so I was like, you know, I go to, I can go to the VA hospital and they'll, they'll hook me up. Uh, and so I went. And he was like, my doctor was like, you, you probably could, you're at the age now where we, you could look at uh, some bifocals. And I was like, uh, and he put them up there and I could see clear as day. It was like, wow, that's, that's, that is clear. And I was like, you know what? I don't want to, I don't want to, I don't want to have the, either the little, the little thing on the side or a line. He's like, no, we have we have uh, progressive glasses. And I was, and he's like, some people have a problem getting used to them, but you know, you, you can get over that in a couple of days. I was like, no, I'm good. I got my glasses home, and I was like, I cannot see a damn thing. So I made another uh, appointment, and he he walked in and he goes, you need those you need those bifocals, don't you? And I was like, yes, sir, I do. So he set me up. And man, I actually loved, I loved my um, progressive glasses. I mean, like the ones that I have, not these ones, but the other ones that you've seen me wear. I, I love those glasses and, you know, I can, I totally got used to them. The problem that those particular glasses with is that on the bottom have this, these ones have like a, a metal portion that, that holds the glass in. But my other ones, they have just like a, piece of rubbery floss that holds it in and sometimes it'll pop out and I have to keep messing with it anyway so that's one reason why I went and got new glasses but I can these are new and so I'm, I'm giving them the runaround but I'm hoping and praying that it's not the case that the prescription is not correct but at times I can tell when I'm looking far away that I know that that is spot on it's just I think getting used to where this my lowest one when I'm reading, because I don't really have a problem here. It's the middle one that's like set for my computer screen that I think is a little, I just have to get used to it. Anyway, I digress. <laughs> here we go. The hurricane is getting worse. Um, not good. This is bad info. All right, Nikki, this is something you're going to have to tell me. If you can do it, then, then I, I know if there's anybody that can do it, you can do it. So right now you sent to me a link. I guess you sent to everyone a link. But when I click on it in like uh, 
uh, StreamYard, it asked me to show it on the screen, so I can't copy it. Do you know what I'm what I'm asking? Click it on it in YouTube. Oh, okay. See, look at th this. That woman is brilliant. She already knew what I was talking about before I even got it out of my mouth. Uh, Siverin oh, says, "Do you think Tampa General Hospital will be put? Will have to put the aqua fence back up? It's during Helene." If it saved the hospital during Helene, then yes, there's going to be a lot more storm surge with this one. Like I can say that without a doubt. Like this is definitely going to be worse than Helene. Even if it's not nearly as bad as what we think, it's going to be, going to be worse than Helene. If for Tampa, well, let, let me make sure I uh, let me make sure I phrase that right. It's not going to be worse than Helene, certainly overall. Um, so uh, it's this is kind of cool. Now I don't know where he's getting this uh, this view from, but he has all of the this is F dot maybe Florida Department of Transportation, but he has all of those things up, which is kind of cool. Speaking of glasses, this guy I think you called him Ryan. What's his name? Ryan Hall. He has the type of glasses that I was wearing prior to these ones right here. So he knows what I'm talking about because it has that little wire thing on the bottom. I call them my uh, Malcolm X glasses because they kind of look like Malcolm X glasses. Uh, uh, make a northern track into South Carolina? No, no. Um, this thing's going to run away from South Carolina uh, quickly. It's going to go way out yonder. Um, so, yeah, that's what I was saying. Like, going north, I mean, I guess your options, obviously you go north. Somebody was telling me that, they were telling me that they were going to go south i don't think under any circumstance when there's a when there's basically a tornado coming through essentially the center of this portion right here would you go south i would go north the track of helene i don't know exactly where it went but it somehow ended up here so I don't know if it kind of went this way, but yeah, I mean, those people, it did, it missed us at the end of the day. It missed us on the Eastern side of North Carolina. But, um, like he said, it doesn't need this one. This particular one doesn't even look like it's going to hit South Carolina. So I'll tell you, I'll tell you one thing that's interesting. One thing that's interesting about our vacation. And uh, so we, like I said, we have a condo and we we made it so that uh, our family members would be able to have guest pass and guest room. So I think we had six rooms, maybe seven total. Um, they are going to allow us to, as of Wednesday, uh, we can cancel, which is one day prior to when we're going to leave. Um, if we did it after the fact, then they would allow us to uh, to change as well. Um, and they're even having a, a, an issue with people who are stuck there now as we speak. So it's not as if they're, they're quote unquote, uh, encouraging people to come given the circumstances. So um, that's one thing. But so with Disneyland, Disneyland said you can cancel early, which we were kind of waiting to figure out what everybody else wanted to do. Or you could uh, wait and let them expire and then they will allow us to reschedule <clears throat> through I think December 31st, January, February, March, April, May, June, October, November, December. Yeah. The January, December 31st. Um, but some people wanted to go to SeaWorld. Now I, I, I've gone to Diego SeaWorld. It's uh, buffering now. I've gone to the, uh, san diego one but not the florida one and i didn't realize that they had these kind of like adult rides i was just looking at one it's like a surfboard one and you're standing up and then you can jump or whatever but we didn't want to go to spend however much money to go to sea world but they wouldn't uh give refunds i don't understand if you have a natural disaster and disney world closes that you can't close or that you can't be willing to refund tickets the experience that i've had i mean i do remember the experience that i had at SeaWorld, but i kind of remember there being kind of like a negative stigmatism 
associated with SeaWorld, you know, Shamu and all those kind of things and people being upset about, you know, the whale in captivity and, and stuff like that. Um, I introduced to you all uh, my friend Jadik. Jadik is his last name, but uh, it's such a cool name. That's what we called him in the Air Force. Um, he has he's become this. He's the CEO of a company called Bloodsport. Um, but he had uh, interaction with officers, which I kind of intimated on. Um, they put him in jail. Um, they put him in a in a in a restraint chair and used stun cuffs on him. And so we're going to go through his story with his business and how he had this interaction with uh, the Tar Tarpon County Sheriff's Office, at least the Sheriff's Jail, because he also had an interaction with the police department. But we're going to be doing those on Tuesdays, I believe. Maybe not, not obviously not this Tuesday. I think he and I are, are going to come on the air later on. But it's kind of just to introduce the fact that we're going to do probably three, maybe four shows because it's it, it's kind of it's kind of involved in the the whole scenario. For example, I he had a bunch of footage that was released to him, but for the time frame that he was there, there seems to be a lot of missing footage. So I submitted my own public records request. And I'm trying to figure out where the discrepancy is. Why is there so much footage that's not there? But uh, so that's going to be coming within the next couple of uh, weeks. Um, not necessarily this this Tuesday, but uh, the Tuesday to follow. Uh, I am going to be switching the time whenever I do. I think Tuesday is going to be static, but I'm going to use 1300 hours 13 is my favorite number so one o'clock eastern standard time is when i will most likely launch or be on live um so if you're interested then that's the time that i will be not earlier not later but 1300 seems to work for the record when it comes to ebay my post office opens at like 8 30 in the morning then they close at 12 and then they reopen at 2. So between 12, so between noon and two o'clock is usually when I have some free time, including to do like a live show. So I think that's, I'm going to take advantage of that and do it that way. Um, so yeah, that's, that's the plan. So I really do appreciate those of you who stopped by, those of you who will check out the video, uh, the restream, if you will. Um, I just kind of, like I said, wanted to get back to the groove of things and kind of test out my setup the way it is as now. I, I think that I like um, it better for the fact that I can have a better looking background behind me. I like that I don't have to have the headset mic. What I would like actually is, is to hear, as far as the monitor, my voice in my headset. I don't know how to do that quite yet, but I think I will figure it out. The last time I think what I did was I had like a little tiny, one of those smaller sets and I put one of them in my ear, which was fine, but we'll figure all those things out. The production of it all, uh, you know, when I first started kind of doing anything YouTube related, uh, I obviously I was working with uh, Genoity Specific you all know that uh, but he was doing his production the way he was doing it he had the help of wonderful people mods mods like uh, nikki uh, helping him out and so it is a task to do that and I'm, I'm quickly recognizing that that is a fact so anyway for those of you who are affected by milton um like i said i wasn't intending on making it seem uh, being selfish in any way i was just kind of relating my, my own personal experience with regards to my life experience with natural disasters and this one in particular um, it obviously is changing people's plans um, and sometimes those type of plans take years to to develop um, which to me uh, lends credence to the way that I kind of do things I'm, I'm I said I'm a, a eternal optimist and I like to be as flexible as I possibly can in any situation so the fact that we basically, I think we might just, I mean, we might take a little trip somewhere, obviously north or maybe a little west, uh, just, you know, for a day or so. 
um, but we we were planning on taking some time off so we might as well just kind of use the time to kind of get some ut time as my wife likes to call it so we may have some quality time in the books so i appreciate you guys stopping by i appreciate the support that you give me if you haven't already please consider subscribing certainly give us a like it's the easiest way for you to let us know how we're doing uh, if you want to uh, reach out to me directly you can uh, my email is faq the madness at gmail.com i try to answer every email that comes in and i have made some connections like for example the next video that i have you will see that um, i was able to get some very good public records advice from uh, gandalf steve i am free uh, because he and i have uh, been in contact in the past so uh, i'm able uh, he can reach out to me anytime and if i just send uh, an email uh, he usually responds and he gave me some really good advice with regards to the public records request that i'm doing about jadix uh, uh case uh i you know i don't even know how far he intends to take it i think that he most likely will um you know seek some type of representation with regards to what happened to him um but it's it is fascinating on any level when we see government officials trying to do the smallest piece of uh or make the smallest effort to hide things especially when you when you catch them on it and steve is really good about the the last video that that i that i watched of his um he got him you, you can tell that he he put them on notice that I know that you have been hiding this from me because somebody else got the exact record that I was looking for. So um, he's given me some advice in that regard. So going to be doing some good things. See what uh, happens. And uh, there's a couple of updates that I got to come up with, too, as well. The uh, Douglas Slade case. I'm kind of interested in figuring out what's going on with that. Um, I need to, I'm still trying to follow up on the SSA case. That's the one that really basically started me off on this journey of, uh, uh because of my mother, um, wanting on any level to record in public. Um, it was because I had to do business for my mother and I wanted to document it, but they prevented me from doing it. So it's kind of where I started. Um, I don't very often go to other public places uh and record to just to see what the reaction is it's just because it doesn't suit me i mean i live in a small town first of all i'm near a town that's bigger but it just doesn't work for me um in the way that i think it does for some others so um i think that i really do have an interest though in in public records and the types of questions that can be answered through public records requests and specifically as it relates to North Carolina, um, and I've heard people talk of late, like the Asheville case, for example, that North Carolina does not recognize body-worn camera footage as public record. So there is a process that you have to go through in order to get uh, those uh, public records. And sometimes it can be quite arduous, especially if you are not the individual that is involved in whatever incident it is. Um, all of you all who are in harm's way with regards to this storm, please uh, be safe. Uh, my family uh, will be praying for yours uh, as well as my own. Uh, but uh, that you have safe passage, uh, that you make all the decisions that you need to, that are guided by uh, our greater power, whatever you, you may call that person or that entity, um, so that you can remain safe. So. Everybody take care. Um, as I say, I like to say often is whether you be on the right, or the left side, politically, ideologically. Um, however, um, what I ask for you as it relates to me is that you meet me somewhere here in the middle. Um, when we decide and remain opposed on the opposite extremes, we are only going in, in the direction that keeps us going away from each other. Well, if we do that thing, we find common ground that allows us to come somewhere in the middle, to meet somewhere in the middle. That is where we can find a ground where we can most likely agree. So 
until we meet next time uh, my name is craig i am faq the madness fact the madness um everybody take care and thanks for for hanging out with me peace thank you for watching if you have a video you'd like for us to cover use the submit link in the description or pinned comment if you enjoyed this one consider subscribing and hit the bell to be notified of future content be sure to check out all of the other content we have for your edutainment. We will continue to respectfully exercise our First Amendment rights and publish the interactions we have with government officials. Remember to like, share, and leave a comment. It's the easiest way for you to let us know your thoughts about our channel. I want to be the greatest. Everybody on the face shit. I look around and feel like everybody is the fakest. I make this every day and I'm impatient. Hoping one day I blow up from the basement. Statement. The top is so vacant. I don't need shit that I think is amazing. Waiting for my day when I'm playing. Sold out shows for a thousand faces. Hey, give me that crown. Get in my way and to be put down. It ain't your place. All this my town. If I want that shit, then I'll get it right now. I'm losing it. The noose it fits. Some loose shit. A stupid myth. You choose to live or choose to dip. You choose to fight or lose your grip and lose a gift. Oh.